Number one, how to run two apps at one time. I'm gonna put YouTube at the top and I'm gonna have Google Chrome down here so I can browse the web while I watch YouTube videos. We're gonna tap on the YouTube app and open that first. And the app you want to be at the top of the screen, you always wanna open that app first. So YouTube is open. I'm now gonna hit the home button. Now I'm gonna open Google Chrome, hit the home button again. Now I'm gonna tap the recent apps button in the bottom right corner. I'm gonna swipe over to YouTube and tap on the YouTube icon and tap split top. And now I'm gonna swipe back over to Google Chrome and tap here. And now I have YouTube open at the top and I have Chrome open at the bottom. I can have Amazon open and be searching through Amazon while simultaneously watching a YouTube video. Let's play this video here. I can tap on the video and tap on this little square in the corner to make it full screen. And now come down here and I can browse through Amazon and I can enjoy some shopping. So pretty cool. Now you can also take the phone and rotate it in the landscape position and tilt up. And in the corner, you'll see a little icon here. If you tap on that, it'll rotate the screen. So you can now look at that video in the landscape position. And if you double tap on the white bar in the center, this will let you switch from left to right what you see. And when you're all done with full screen and you wanna go back to just looking at one app, take your finger, put it on the white bar in the center and just drag it to the left. And that'll take you out of the full screen. If you found that helpful, make sure you bump that like button down below. And also keep an eye out of the bottom left corner of this video. You'll see some really cool products that go really well with this phone. And I'm gonna flash them on the screen periodically through the video, all right? Number two, tap on the button in the upper left corner. This is gonna take you to the Motorola experience, which is where you'll find uh, cool ways to personalize your phone, cool gestures and other hidden things that are built in the phone that you didn't even know about. Now, one specific one I wanna show you is in gestures. Tap on gestures and tap on sidebar. You wanna turn on this feature. This is a super cool feature that Motorola took from Samsung phones. By turning this on, it's gonna give you this cool little um, sidebar which will allow you to have shortcuts to your favorite apps right on the home screen. Watch this, I'm gonna hit the home button and you'll see this little notch right here on the side of the screen. You just swipe over at the notch and here you'll have a shortcut to basically your favorite apps or your recently used apps. Now, here, these are the default ones that are set, but if you tap on the uh, little settings wheel in the bottom right corner right here, you can, you can pick different apps to show up in that menu. Maybe you say, I don't really want to have my calendar, and I don't wanna have my clock. I would rather have Amazon Shopping or I'd rather have Facebook. You can simply tap on those apps and now those are the apps that are gonna show up in that menu. You can swipe up to get to the new apps that we just added just like that. Number three, we're gonna swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again and tap on our settings wheel at the bottom of the screen. And we're gonna go up to battery, swipe up and tap on battery percentage. And by tapping this, it's gonna show us the battery percentage in the upper right corner of the phone. So you'll always know exactly how much battery life you have and when it's time to charge. Number four, launch your flashlight at any given time by doing this gesture. Grab your phone, turn it to the side, and you're gonna do a chopping motion like this. This will automatically launch your flashlight. Two chops turns it on, and two chops will turn it off, just like that. That's a cool feature that is enabled in the settings. You can always turn it off as well if for whatever reason it's not serving you by tapping on that Motorola Experience button. Go to Gestures, go to Fast Flashlight, and simply turn it off. That's how you toggle that setting. Number five, if you find yourself in an app and there's something you need to get a picture of, you can simply tap on this button in the bottom right corner, which is your Recent Apps button and tap on this button here to grab a quick screenshot. This will take a screenshot and give you some quick controls that you can then use to crop down that screenshot. Maybe you only need this section that says we'd love to hear your feedback. You can simply drag from the corners to crop it down. And you can also tap on a pencil here to even add some notes. Maybe you wanna circle something specific. When you're done, you can hit the check to automatically have it saved into your uh, gallery. 
you can hit the share button to send it out via text or email, or you can trash it by simply hitting on the trash can. When you're all done, hit that check to close us out. Number six, if you're not a huge fan of the Google Photos app because it can be a little clunky and not the easiest to use, there is another app you can download that will give you a dedicated gallery without all the noise. If you go to the Play Store and simply do a search, type in gallery, and look for this app here. This is another gallery app that's also made by Google that's much cleaner. Simply tap install. There are no ads. It's a very clean interface. One of the big differences is it doesn't have the Google Photo Backup built in, which some people like, some people don't. Um, I personally like it because it's a super clean interface that's not constantly spamming you to sign up for Google's uh, additional storage. If you open it up here, you can see, you're gonna give it access, hit continue, and this is it. It's super clean. It's a normal gallery experience, again, without all the extra noise of Google's backup service and wanting you to sign up for a subscription. So if you don't love Google Photos and you want something cleaner, download the gallery app. Now, if you swipe up, we can find the gallery app, we can hold down and then drag down to bring it to our home screen just like this. And if you wanna get rid of that Google Photos app, we can simply hold down and then drag it up to the remove button. And now we just move it right out of the way and now we have our gallery app in place. Number seven, if you wanna launch your camera from any screen, you can do that by simply double tapping on the power button just like this. Tap it twice. It'll open up your camera and allow you to get right to taking pictures. This will also work if your phone is turned off or excuse me, if it's asleep. For example, I'm on the lock screen here. If I double tap, it'll wake up the phone and take me right to the camera and allow me to not miss any important opportunities. Number eight, using that Moto Experience app, there's some really cool ways to personalize your phone. Now if we swipe up here and tap on personalize, here are some of the cool things that you can do. The first thing is go to icon shape. You can play around with how your icons are gonna show up on the home screen. I think the square look is my favorite, so I'm gonna hit save there. Next, I'm gonna change my font, pick something a bit funner. I'm gonna go with this square font. There we go, hit the back button. And then I'm gonna to go to colors and pick a theme for my phone. Let's pick this cool uh, reddish color. And for the wallpaper, let's pick this blue. You can see how just toggling through how it's gonna change what things will look like here. Actually, I'm gonna go with this brown. And then icon theme, I'm gonna turn this on as well, and it's gonna give them a cool theme based on the colors that I've selected. I'm gonna hit save. Now, if I go to the home screen, you'll see all my icons are squared with a little uh, bump in the corner and the color of the icons are different. Now, one more thing, hold down on the home screen here. You can also change the theme of your phone. There's some really cool built-in themes at the bottom here. Let's try this uh, Seaway theme. Basically, some that are just already curated for you. And that's different background, different color of the icons here. Swiping down, it also changes the color of your switches. So definitely play around with those different options there. Again, hold down the home screen and you can toggle through all these different um, pre-built-in themes that you see here. Actually curious to see this one and gives the icons a cool little blue look and the buttons blue at the top there. So play around with those different options to customize your phone and give it a unique look. Number nine, if you need some help blocking out the noise, go to your Moto folder and go to the Moto Unplugged app right here. This is a great setting that will allow you to uh, turn off distractions, uh, limit the notifications that come through your phone, and also limit the apps you have access to and not worry about your phone constantly pinging you every time something new comes through. You can create a session you can select what apps you want to have access to and what apps will be cut off. And you can also require a password to get out of the section. If I go to customize here, I can select the apps that are allowed. Maybe you go through here and you only select, like I wouldn't even select the camera. I would limit this really just to the phone and to messages. So for example, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, all those won't be allowed in the session. Just my phone and my text messages. 
which are right here. You could add some other ones like maybe a Kindle app um, or even the web browser. We're gonna save that. You can change the wallpaper. You can also set how you want uh, notifications to be handled. You can say, hey, I don't want any calls or you can say, I want select calls to come through or only contacts. Same thing with messages, same thing with alarms as well or calendar appointments. And you can also require it to have a password to get out of the session as well. This is also great when you're gonna pass your phone to maybe uh, one of your kids. You can maybe select just a couple of games that they would have access to and then you could cut off the rest. That way they can't uh, touch anything that really is not for your eyes. That's another way to use this. Now watch this, I'm gonna hit start and I'm gonna hit do not disturb. I do need to give it access first time to do this hit our back button and back button again then you'll need to hit notifications and hit allow hit continue and start the session now you want to select the time frame which you can have a time frame or you can simply just say no time limit just wait for that password hit start and now we're officially in our session and we only have access to messages and phone calls. I can't swipe up to get to my app drawer. I'm strictly limited to what is on the screen. So this is great, again, multiple reasons. It could be just you trying to block out the noise to get work done, or maybe take a nap, or it could be, hey, I'm gonna put all my kids' favorite games and video apps on the screen and block out everything else so they can't go through your phone. They'll just be limited to what you have on screen. When you're all done, you're gonna hit the end button, say yes, and then it will ask you to either put in your pin, password, or I can use my fingerprint to exit this setting. This is super cool, I love this, and it's a much cleaner way to, um, to handle blocking out those distractions. All right, number 10, our final tip, I wanna show you how to launch your Google Assistant. There's two different ways to do this. One, you can hold down on the home button for one second. This will launch your Google Assistant and you can begin to just start speaking the command that you want. For example, set an alarm for 10 a.m. There you go. And then you can go into your alarm app later if you wanna make a change to that. You can also hold down on the power sleep button as well. And this will also launch the assistant. So you have two different ways to do this. And then you can just begin to speak. Now you also have the Gemini assistant as well, which is a new Google assistant. And you can try this out by simply tapping on try now. The cool thing about the Gemini assistant, it's a more advanced version of Google assistant. So with the Gemini assistant, you can actually uh, ask it more elaborate things. So right here, it's telling you get help by learning learning in new ways, planning events, writing, thank you notes, and more. So let's hit try now. And here it will um, show you all the different things that are uh, built in with the Gemini Assistant. Again, this is a little bit more advanced than Google Assistant and you can test it out. It'll show you a few of the different things you can do. For example, you can ask Google Assistant to write an email Maybe you're the coach of your kid's soccer team. You can say, write an email telling the parents that we have practices on Mondays and Thursdays and let them know that everyone needs to bring $100 for their dues. You can put that into your Gemini Assistant and it'll write it into a clean, well-crafted email that you can copy and paste and send out. That's just one example. You can do all kind of other cool things um, just by playing around with it. You will need to hit the switch button and this will switch you over from Google Assistant to the Gemini Assistant. And same thing, holding the home button or holding down the power button will take you to that assistant, all right? This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you guys found this helpful. If it was, hit that like button down below. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Here I'm gonna to link to my playlist so you can see all the other cool videos I've made on this phone and continue to learn. And I'll also link to another really helpful video as well right here, so definitely check that out. And we'll catch you in the next one. Make sure you leave me a comment down below and let me know which tip was your favorite and most helpful. I always love to hear that feedback in the comment section down below. Thanks again for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.